this was a, a poll done you know, at the end of last year, do you accept or oppose the use of COVID-19 tracing, like contact tracing, which was what we just talked about, like on your phones? And look at, look at China. So I didn't leave the, 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 the strongly agree, strongly accept, this, the dark blue is strongly accept, the light blue is accept, the yellow is, okay, maybe yes, maybe no, and then the red is reject, and then, or oppose, and the, this is strongly oppose. So look at the U.S., China's 58% of the population strongly accepts the government, you know, tracking us. In the U.S., it's 16%, right? I mean, it's really a, a very different way of seeing things. I think I pulled this off of a website in Wuhan. This was after. So when things shut down in Wuhan, again, to get these numbers, um, Y'all just shut down, man. Like, the city shut down. Like, literally, y'all, like, you, you got to understand this. When Wuhan, so this is a city of, like, what, 13 million or something? I think it's about 13 million people. When, when Wuhan shut down in order to stop the spread of the virus, it literally was a ghost town for, like, 40 days or more. But I think it was about 40 days, as I recall. Like a ghost town. I mean, there's like nothing. You didn't leave your house, like nothing. People delivered things to your door or to outside. But like it was the streets, the streets are never empty because there's so much traffic in China everywhere, right? So, okay, so we already talked about this question, right? Like what's it like to have a really strong government and rule, lots of rules? And because, you know, we don't have a strong government and rules, right? Like, I mean, here, I don't even know, whatever. Everyone just kind of does their own thing, right? in comparison. And so what you all are saying is like, yeah, whatever, it just is, you're just living. Do you feel like, do you feel like your personal freedoms get taken away by having a government with really strong rules? Like, do you uh, have a thought on that? I feel the same, I live in China and I live in here. And here in the United States, it's all about freedom and my individual freedom and my individual liberty and my ability to do this and do that and do what I wanna do, right? So everything is really about freedom and liberty. And so I think like a sociologist, right? So I taught a class here called the Sociology of Freedom years ago. I used to teach a lot of really interesting classes and now I just have this class. But um, it was really about f just like what is freedom? And I, what I did was like, I would walk people through a day. You know, I wake up in the morning, I get out, I go into the bathroom, I brush my teeth, I do my morning constitution, I go make coffee, I go here or there, I walk up to school, I do all these things and the next day, I do it again, and again, and again. And, and it, almost at no point in my reality, I'm just speaking like a sociologist. This is not political at all, right? It's not, this is not, I'm not shilling for China or, or a, a stronger government. But like, at no point at all in my day, I think about today, yesterday, the day before, I don't even remember when my, any action that I took would have been different had I lived in the middle of like a, some kind of dictatorship or something. You know what I mean? Because freedom, my day-to-day -day life is just my day-to-day -day life. So I'm not arguing for, for one way of being or another. I'm not arguing that. What I'm asking for is step outside of our lives and start thinking about, wait, what is it? What is freedom really? And what's it mean for me? I would just say freedom is very hard to measure. It depends on what are you talking about? Okay. Like in China, you... Uh, Talk I about you, just your day-to-day -day life here at Penn Daily State. Daily life? It's about the same, like in China and in the United States. I think they all agree with it. Uh, and like my personal story is when I first came to the United States for high school, my high school classmate asked me, do you feel more freedom? Because whatever, whatever bad happens in China, I'm like, where did you know all of this? I feel completely the same. I watched a like documentary filmed by a foreigner lived in China for 20 years, and he described like the freedom in China is uh, freedom of like far from fear, because you mm. don't have like firearms or like drugs like that. So. It is very, like, you will feel safe to walk down the street, like, in the midnight, but I will never do that here in the U.S. But I also feel like they have a little bit, like, too strict, like, strict um, limitation on entertainment.
like mm, how the mm-hmm. content were created. Right, I got you. So yeah, like, well, I felt well, like that is kind of like too harsh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the live there is like like safer. I could say that. So like the things that you can get to on the web, the like lots of stuff that you could watch, this kind of stuff. It's like there's a lot of censorship. Yes. And and I think about what if I were walking around the class right now. And looking at like what are what are the things that people look at or are looking at or have looked at on their phones and all that? Most of it's just stupid shit anyway. So it's like whatever, censor it. Like my God, like what's it? But some things really matter. Some things get censored that actually really matter. But things get censored here. A lot of stuff, y'all. By the way, um, a lot of stuff gets censored in the United States, my friends, and you have no idea about it, and you think you're getting the truth and you're not getting the truth. At least in China, maybe you can know you're not getting the truth. But here, we think we are. And I'm not sure which is worse, actually. Because you here, I think a lot of us get lulled into this idea that we understand what's going on. In fact, it's, we don't understand anything about what's going on. I truly believe, like, privacy is overrated. Privacy is over. Hang yeah, on. Like, this is the quote. This is the quote of the day. Yes. Privacy is overrated. Like people get like very angry and frustrated when like they know, like government can track their phone and watch their camera, but at least my my privacy is worthless. Like you, you can you can like hack in my camera and watch my day and put it on internet. I don't really care. Like. like no, no one will have the time to watch your life. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I don't really, like, get, like, maybe government officials, they need, like, high privacy to have, like, national security and stuff. Yeah. But just average people, their privacy is worthless. No one care. Listen, all right, so here's, listen, man, dude, here's what I want to say on that. I'm, I'm not... You, you all understand that that's a, this is a sociological point. It's not, it doesn't, I'm, I'm sitting on the sociological point. So what's it mean it's worthless? Like, where is it not worthless? Where is it worthless? Where is it not worthless? This is like just sociologically speaking. Because most of what you do your whole life really doesn't matter to anybody. And some things do. And where do you draw that line? But by the way, the reason I li- I, we live stream Switch 119 and it goes out into the world is because like, I'm, I'm like, look, no matter what, everything that happens in here, anybody can look at. And at every moment, I know that anybody can look at it. And so I want, I want to be completely transparent at every level. So go ahead and look at it. I don't care. Live.